So this is Math 99, and we're starting to dig into our trigonometry packet, our trig unit. And uh, we'll talk about trig and what, what, our, uh, what our trig functions mean. We're going to talk primarily to start with, with two functions, one called sine and one called cosine. And then we'll build up the other, the other, uh, the other ones. So trig, one way to think about trigonometry is um, in, the, in the context of right triangles you know, triangles that have a 90 degree, a 90 degree angle in them. And uh, if I think about this triangle, A, B, and C, those are my, those would be angles, like I have angle A, angle B, angle C. I know how the angles are related to each other. If I were to add up all the angles, angle A plus angle B plus angle C, I would get 180 degrees. And I would get that in any, um, any triangle. I also know in a right triangle how the side lengths are, con are connected. So this is side length A, this is side length B, this is side length C. And that's standard to go like small, a uh, lowercase letter is the side length and it's opposite the angle with the uppercase level uh, letter of, this, of the same letter, so opposites. But again, I know how the side lengths are related to each other, Pythagorean theorem. So I know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, you know. Um, the hypotenuse squared is the sum of the squares of the legs. Now, notice that this only compares angles to angles, and this only compares side lengths to side lengths. Um, before I start doing any trick, I don't have any way to compare an angle to a side length. And so that's what trig does. That's what these trig functions do. So let me take this angle B. Um, I'll just call it theta. And that's the measure of this angle, like 30 degrees, whatever. And we use theta. Typically, we use uh, Greek letters to stand for angle measurements or, or capital letters for the vertex. And here's what um, sine and cosine do. So I'll just call this trig, any trig function, like sine or cosine. What they do is they, they tape in an angle, and they spit out a ratio. So for example, sine, it's abbreviated as S-I-N. So sine of theta, sine of this angle, what it would return would be uh, the ratio B divided by C. So it would be this opposite side divided by that hypotenuse. That's what it does. And, and cosine, again, it takes in an angle, it's a function. But what cosine would do is it would spit out a different ratio. It would tell you the ratio of these, A divided by C. So in a right triangle, we can think of sine as being uh, the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And we can think of cosine as being the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So let me get some actual values up here. Let's say this side is four long and this side is three long. And uh, I don't know the measure of, um, of theta, but I want to find out what sine of it would be. So what's sine of theta? And I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it would be four divided by whatever that hypotenuse is. Huh. Oh yeah, I can figure that out using Pythagorean theorem, right? Three squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. Oh, <laughs> there's the answer. Uh, if, you, if you already knew it, it is 5. If you don't see it right away, this is 9 plus 16. 25 is c squared, so c is 5. So sine then would be, sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse, 4 fifths. And cosine of that same angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And I'm saying like opposite and adjacent, these refer to legs. So these refer to the sides that are not the hypotenuse. Great. So let's, uh, let's get one more definition up here, tangent. Uh, tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Um, one uh, mnemonic device that some people use is Sokatoa, like if your foot got hurt and you have to put
put your toe in some Epsom salts. So katoa, so sine opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent opposite over adjacent. So in this triangle, tangent of that angle would be opposite over adjacent. So opposite side over the adjacent side, four thirds. And notice that what we did is we, we found those without even actually knowing anything about the angle measure. But if we, uh, if we did have the angle measure and we put it into a calculator and went like, uh, you know, sine of whatever that is, it would spit out four fifths or, or 0 0.8. So again, remember this right here. This is pretty key. They take in an angle and they spit out a ratio. Now those are our main, are kind of our three main trig functions. There's three other functions which are called the, the reciprocal functions. And they are um, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And they're called the reciprocal functions because they're just the reciprocals of these. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent is adjacent over opposite. And these all have abbreviations, so let me let me get these abbreviations up here. Sine, cos, tan. Cosecant is abbreviated CSC, cosecant, secant, SEC, and cotangent is abbreviated that way. So that being said, on this triangle, I could find the other uh, three trig functions as well, cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. And once I know these, these are easy. So cosecant is sine flipped over, the reciprocal of sine, five-fourths. Secant would be five-thirds, cotangent would be four-thirds. Let's, uh, one thing I wanna point out here is what if I switch the angle, instead of this theta uh, angle, what if I was doing it for this angle, and I'll call this alpha, I was trying to make a little alpha in there and it was really sloppy. Uh, alpha looks like a fish, but again, Greek. So sine of alpha, if I found all six, um, trig functions of these, now I'm going to fix myself on this angle because I'm going sine of this angle. So my, my opposite hypotenuse has meaning relative to what angle I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about this sine, the opposite is 3, but the hypotenuse is still 5. So this is 3 fifths. The cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 fifths. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, three-fifths. And again, those reciprocals, cosecant is sine flip. Secant is a reciprocal of cosine. Cotangent is a reciprocal of tangent. So that's really what I'm going to be asking you to do in this first set, is finding, um, finding trig values for a sketch triangle. So let's, let's do another one here. And it's only works for a right triangle, you know, a triangle that has a 90 degree angle. And let's talk about this angle right here that I'll call beta. And let's find all six trig functions for it. So sine of beta, cosine of beta, tangent of beta, etc. So first off, I'm going to have to know that missing side. And the way that I'm going to have to get it is Pythagorean theorem. And um, I'll just call this side side B just to give it a name. And notice that that's not my hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is 7. So I know that 2 squared plus B squared is 7 squared. So 4 plus B squared is 49. Uh, subtract 4. B squared is 49 divided by 4 is 45. So B would be the square root of 45. Let's see, 45 is 9 times 5. 
those are both still square rooted. So square root of 9 is 3. So I can write this as 3 root 5. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And notice I'm, I'm fixing myself on the angle that I'm referencing. So the opposite is opposite it. So this would be 3 root 5 over 7. Uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. hypotenuse so that would be 2 sevenths. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And I noticed that that would be... Um, 3 root 5 over 2. Great, so now let me do these reciprocals. Uh, if I flip cosine, that gives me secant, so 7, 2, or secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Uh, similarly, if I flip sine, I get cosecant, so that's 7 over 3 root 5. Now, there's a little thing here. Technically, we're not supposed to leave these radicals in the denominator. So, um, I can get it out of there by multiplying by this version of 1, root 5 over root 5. And notice that leaves me 7 root 5 over 5, root 5 times root 5 is 5, 3 times 5 is 15. Uh, cotangent would be similar thing, 2 over 3 root 5. I'm going to rationalize that denominator, multiply by root 5 over root 5. That gives me 2 root 5 over 15 as well. So there's all six trig functions for angle theta. All right, let's find all six trig functions for, for this triangle, for this right triangle. So I know the legs are 9 and 9, so I can find that hypotenuse by using Pythagorean theorem. Uh, 9 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. So 81 plus 81 is c squared. Uh, 81 plus 81, so c equals the square root of 162. I know that 162 is 81 times 2. The square root of 81 is 9. So 9 root 2. Great. So then I have all my pieces. So let me find uh, sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, and then uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse, 9 over 9 root 2. Uh, the 9's divide out, that's 1 over root 2. And if I rationalize that denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2, I get root 2 over 2. Uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, also 9 over 9 root 2. So that's going to be the same root 2 over 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. 9 over 9 is 1. So then cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So notice how in sine I had this 1 over root 2. If I flip that, that's root 2 over 1. <laughs> over 1. So cosecant is root 2. Similar secant, root 2. Cotangent is 1. Uh, 1 over 1 is 1 as well. So there's my values for that triangle. So I have this right triangle. I want to find the, the six trig functions for angle beta. So sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. So this root 13 is actually the hypotenuse. So if I want to find this missing side that I'll call b, b squared plus 2 squared equals root 13 squared. So b squared would be, a b squared would be 4, uh, b squared plus 4 would be 13. Subtract that 4, b squared is 9, so b would be 3. All right. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 3 over root 13. And I rationalize that denominator. Multiply by that version of 1. And I get 3 root 13 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 over root 13, which is going to be 
2 root 13 over 13. Tangent opposite over adjacent, 3 halves. And then for those reciprocal functions, uh, cosecant is sine flipped over, so it'll be root 13 over 3. Cosine would be root 13 over 2. Tangent would be 2 thirds. All right, um, that's that's the basic idea with these. Um, just make sure you know all the sides, and then uh, then find the trig functions for them.